welcome to our service today. It's a beautiful day outside, but we have a wonderful, more beautiful day inside here. Make sure you come to worship God and thank Him and give Him praise and glory in all things. Sometimes it's hard to give Him praise and glory in the bad things, but we're supposed to because that's what makes us strong as Christians. Keep our faith strong. If you have to be a visitor, though, we would like for you to find a visitor's card, if you would. And fill that out and place that in the offering plate later when we worship with the tithes and offerings. Uh, give us a memento that you're here. And also uh, ask that you come back and join us. Glad to have you, each one of you. Our members also, get sometimes uh, we say like the visitors, we're glad to have our members here too. Each one of, each one of us. Uh, I have a couple, several announcements to make. Um, and I hope I don't forget one of them. We're supposed to start with a with video today, though. Got that video ready? Let's do the video deal with the announcements. Georgia Barnett. Sometimes I think that rural people give up on themselves because they, they find themselves in a, a small context. But when I read the scripture, here's what I see. I see that people travel from all over to get to Jesus. About 10 years ago, all of our older people began to die out and we couldn't get any younger people to come in. I didn't really know much about the church. You never saw many cars here on Sunday mornings. So. Maroons really first came on the scene for me whenever I was doing an evaluation of all of the people that we had at our church. And I noticed that we didn't really have anybody from the Marooch area that was going to our church. And that's only 19 minutes away. We tried everything we knew and there's nothing to work. And I guess I was in denial the whole time. There was only six people here at the time. They had not met in the sanctuary for six years. They said that they were feeling like they were just prolonging the inevitable. And I thought the church was going to completely close. But then God came along and introduced me to Casey Johnson. He came over and went around town and looked. And he said, mm, you could probably have 100 people a week. I kind of laughed and I didn't think that would be possible. We've reached so many people um, so quickly. What surprised me is people, all of them are right here all this time, that needed to go to church and we just did not get them here. How I ended up in this church was uh, through my sister-in-law. She didn't want to come alone, so she invited her family. I did not know Escar at all. Uh, he showed up at the church the day I heard the word from the Lord, and I felt his presence. Um, and then one day he called me, and uh, he said that he wanted to talk to me about salvation. So I went over to his house and opened up the scriptures and explained to him what it means to get saved. And he chose to put his faith and his trust in Jesus, and so we were excited about baptizing him. Members of this church have gone out to the community, and they see they see Jesus in us. They see a change in this church and they want to come and be a part of it. A lot of church planting um, takes place in bigger city areas. I love the fact that God's reaching people in the cities. But I, but I want people to know that God still loves the country too. That there is a place for God to move and to work in our churches in these rural areas. And so don't give up. God's still here. stays in the state of Louisiana. Amen. So uh, that will be used to uh, spread the gospel in Louisiana. And just as in Marouge, I know, I'm pretty sure for a fact, a lot of people around this church right here did not go to church. And we need to start some kind of outreach ministry or some way to contact them also. So uh, you'll be praying about our, uh, what God leads you to donate for this uh, missions offering. Uh, we will be having a, 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 an end gathering next Sunday morning. But that does not mean you can give whatever you want to. So, George, with that state missions offering. So, be praying about that. Uh, also, on Sunday night, October 2nd, we'll be having our own little uh, love offering. 
be for the uh, love offering, housewarming, past appreciation, what do you want to call it, but we will be uh, making a, uh, a little, uh, small donation to our new pastor and helping them get settled in their house. Uh, so on October the 2nd, after our service that Sunday night, we'll be making that donation to them. So uh, anytime between now and the 2nd, if you'd like to make a donation to that little fund, uh, just pick up one of the love offering envelopes out in the back. Uh, there's some on the table. That's the offering with a big love card on top of it. Uh, so take one, put some money in it, and pray about it, put some more money in it, pray about it, put some more money in it. <laughs> And then uh, that night we'll make that as an offering, a love offering to our new pastor and his wife as they settle into their house each day. Also, make mention this coming Wednesday night, we've changed our, uh, uh, voted this past Wednesday to uh, change our, the timing and schedule for our Wednesday night program back to the original 5, 5.30 to 6.30 will be the meal time, and from 6.30 to, uh, to 7.30 will be the time that we will have our prayer meeting time as well as the children activities. So keep that in mind, uh, uh, that's on the screen, but also 6, 5.30, 6.30 meal time, 6.30, 7.30 prayer meeting and children's activities time. Also, uh, I'll make mention on uh, uh, Thursday night, the 29th of this month, we'll have a men's meeting, men's ministry meeting, get some things kind of set up what we can do to, uh, I think one of the primary things is start getting uh, set up to replace the uh, children's uh, play equipment. Uh, I think that, that's the main thing on the agenda, but I think other things too. Also, I want to uh, let you know about a uh, one-way tent crusade. Yes. Uh, that's to be held September the 25th and 28th, beginning at 6.30. The Jackson Parish Recreation Field, that is on Highway 4, just east of Jonesboro. Uh, Brother Bill Britt will be the evangelist. And if I remember correctly, that was the event we had when we had the, uh, the, the outreach uh, evangelism we had at uh, West, Park, West Park High School a couple years ago. The uh, worship band will be We Are Called. Anybody know heard of them? Anyway, they will be the worship band, but the real, uh, Bill Britt will be the uh, evangelist. So keep that in mind. So I imagine if we want to get together and go as a group, uh, we can do that. That's for between the 25th and 28th uh, uh, of, of September. And I think that's pretty well all the announcements. Again, what's that to hear each one of you here this morning? We pray that you come to worship God. Now we've got the announcements out of the way. Let's now worship. If you would, turn to page number 361, or using the screen. Stand together, we sing, we have come into his house, and gather his name, worship, and we will sing both verses, I'm sorry. Both verses, 361.
everyone here, Father in heaven, has something in their life that they need you for. That they pray for. And it's my prayer, Father, that you would answer their prayers. <coughs> Love that we lift us up to. And Father, through that girl, child that you bring to the table. If we listen close enough, Father, there's something there for each and every one. That same heart. Love that word. Fellowship time, you like uh, across the aisle. Let me go to our service. Uh, not turn around and wave to them. God loves you. Thanks for coming here.
please, sir. get political, but no, as Christians, we're hitting every day with a certain kind of chaos, animosity to us, because we believe in a God. Faith is what's going to get us through it all. Amen. Faith is the victory, and we've got to make sure that our faith remains strong, that our hope remains strong, and our light of love as we out in the world, that they see Jesus in us. And sometimes that's hard to do, knowing we've been thrown at us, ungodly stuff, inhumane stuff. But still, faith is going to be that victory that's going to help us get through day to day. And listen, it's going to get worse, I think, before it gets better. That's my thought. Maybe wrong, but God's in control. 345, now I belong to Jesus. Three, all three verses again. We had sung this in a while, but a great little song because it shows and proves me. Yeah, I belong to Jesus, and Jesus is mine. 345, now I belong to Jesus. Thank you. 
thank for each one that's here today, Lord, and pray that each one receive a blessing. Lord, we just pray that you'll open our ears, our hearts, Lord, to receive your word. Lord, at this time, we just want to take up this offering. Pray, Lord, that you'll bless it and use it for the glory of your kingdom. We ask it all in Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 Thank you for all you do for us each day. Thank you again to have this opportunity, the freedom to come and worship you in the house that we choose. We give you the praise and glory in all things. We thank you for the time of offering, Lord, that you take it, you bless the giver, and take it and use it to multiply and further your kingdom. Pray the remain of our service, Lord, that you do the case you come to sing for us, give her the voice, the strength, Believability. Then later, as Brother Cal come and bring a message to us that our hearts be open, our spirits be open, to accept what you have to say to us. Hide it in our hearts, Lord, and use it this coming week. We're out in the world and be a witness to, witness to those about us. In Jesus' name, let me pray. Amen.
I'm glad this morning that he's the one that's holding on to me and me not holding on to him. You know, there's a lot of stuff happening within this world and our own lives and the daily things that we run against that will cause me to turn loose. You know, doubt will make you turn loose. Wondering, where God, are you really there? Are you still there? Are you doing everything for me? You promise you're going to do for me? You know what? We're just not going to hold on to all. You say, well, the Christian shouldn't feel that way. Well, I got news for you, Satan. Don't act like something. I don't you just know you're God's child. Let me right. you turn your Bible to the book of Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. We want to look at a section here of, of, of Scripture here that, that teaches us, shall we say, some things about Christ that that may not be necessarily on the list of the things that we have, have, that we normally think about. <clears throat> Everything we learn about Christ shows us His greatness. Amen. Amen. His greatness. Yeah. And for some here today, I believe, and in, in, in so what we're about to look at, uh, for some, I believe Christ is going to be greater to you when you walk out this door than He was before you came in. <coughs> And we're going to answer a couple of questions, and we're going to also this morning, uh, and not they're not necessarily numbered or just in the process of this message, uh, not only are we going to answer a couple of questions, but we're also going to, um, shall we say, dispel a myth of this world. And, um, and so I am going to make mention of that. I'm not going to get deep into it. That's another message for another time, and yes, I do know the time. Well, we're in Colossians chapter 1, and we have been studying through this, this process all the way up and, 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 and speaking about, the, the, again now, the, the preeminence of Jesus Christ. And last week, we spent a good bit of time talking about, again, the, 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 the relationship, not necessarily the Father, God, to Son in that sense, but the relationship of Jesus Christ in the sense that He is God. Okay. He's, not, he's not just a son, though he is a son. And we're going to start verse number 15, and I'm going to read through this. And I'm, we spent all, all last week on, on one verse, two words, basically. But I'm going to get through all of these verses this morning because all this fits together. You need, you need to see how this fits. Verse 15 says, who is, speaking of Christ, says, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? Again, image not in the sense of a similar reflection, but an absolute perfect uh, production, okay, of what? Of an invisible God. First more, not in the sense that Christ ever had a beginning. We're looking at another verse here just a, a bit as we close on this, because Christ never had a beginning. He was never born in the, and yes, he was born here on this earth, but we need to think about this in the sense he was introduced to this earth, manifest, Word became flesh. The book of John says he tabernacled with us. Yes. Come on. Let me say something now. Yeah. Let me tell you something I think that maybe we don't think about. And, and I, I'm not talking about a sense of just dwelling on it, but, but recognizing Christ willingly left glory. He willingly stood up, got off of his throne in a perfect heaven to come to this stinking, rotten, nasty earth. Amen. You know what we do? Some of you already thought it right now when I just said it. You know, it's really not that bad here. You ain't been there yet. That's right. I expect that most all of us here this morning have a loved one that's no longer hated and in glory now. I never knew my grandparents on either side. They died years before I was born. If, you, if you're here today and you have a grandparent that's alive, you need to praise God. Amen. For lots of reasons. I've had, I've, I've lost my one of my dearest, maybe my dearest friend 
couple of years ago, the cancer came so very, very quickly. I've known that boy since the third grade. He and I were inseparable for so many years. He remained very, very close up until his death. I preached his funeral. And you know, as much as I miss him, as much as his wife misses him, this past week, he, he, it was his birthday week, reading some things on Facebook, but as much as we miss him, listen, as much as you miss loved ones, that you know that you have a peace because they called on Jesus Christ as their Savior, Amen. as much as you know that they're there, you need to understand something. They're waiting on you to come to them. They're not coming back to you. They're not coming back to this field of earth okay, in this sense. All right. But we see here again this, this, this phrase, firstborn. Again, Christ always, even as a man, pay attention to this. Christ was 100% God and 100% man. Yes. Okay. You say, well, I don't know. I can't figure that out, so I ain't going to believe it. Listen, if that's where your faith is, there's going to be a lot of things that you're not going to believe. That's right. There's a lot of things I can't figure out. Now let me just, okay, this old, this old bastard Louisiana country boy, okay, listen, I ain't figured out yet how a cloud can hold water up in the sky. <laughs> you ever just sit outside in a chair somewhere in the shade and just kind of look up there and say, man, they, they, you know, a few weeks ago, we got inches and inches and inches and inches of rain. All that was being held up there in the clouds. You ever flew through the clouds in an airplane? I didn't see no buckets of water up there. Amen. There's lots of stuff I don't understand. But all I have to know is God's in charge of it. God did it. God created it. It don't matter if I can understand it. Okay? Let's move to verse number 16 here. Verse number 16. Now, let me say this. In the weeks to come, I'm going to prepare you a little half sheet that's going to be in your bulletin. Okay? I'll give this to Miss Lynn. She'll print this out. But every Christian, the day that we live in right now, you need to have this little thing that you can just have. It's, your, it's going to be very simple, okay? Just because because I don't want to overload here, you're going to need two or three or four different facts, boom, 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 boom that you can speak to people and talk to people about. Amen. And just hold on. Verse 16. For by him, speaking of Christ, were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, Visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities, okay, or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Amen. Christ is the creator of yes. all things, okay? Again, in earth here being, being, being on earth, the material things, uh, the spiritual things, visible things, invisible things. This phrase here in 16 where it says <clears throat> whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. Okay, Here in context of what it's speaking of, this here is hierarchy of angels. Okay? The, no, I'm not going to say that. You'll get us going somewhere. Now when it says angels here, it's talking about those that have remained faithful and also fallen angels. It covers all of them. Okay? Christ is not an angel like the Mormons teach. Amen. Okay? Satan is not Christ's brother as the Mormons teach. Amen. Jesus Christ is the only begotten son of the Holy God. Okay? Okay? Christ created the angels. Even right now, Jesus Christ is at the right hand of the Father and the angels are serving him and on their knees prone Worshiping him, okay, Amen. even now, at all times, at all times. Christ is Lord, is ruler of all angels, even those that are in the bed. Now listen to me. Every demon knows the, this book better than anybody on earth. Yes. They know that there's a day of reckoning coming or they know that it's written. 
course, because they've been deceived, they're hoping that the deceiver can defeat God at some point and those things won't happen to them. But I got news for you, it's going to happen. Yeah. Right. Every one of those then will be cast into hell. All right? <clears throat> Different levels of hell. We'll get to that another time. All right. Now, let's talk a minute just about Christ as creator. Turn quickly to Psalm 33. We're just going to look quickly at these in two places. Psalm 33. One verse. Verse 6 says, By the word of the Lord were the heavens made. Yeah, we discussed this. We've, talked, we've gone through this in the book of Genesis. and uh, we're, we're in the book of Genesis on Wednesday night, going through verse by verse. Okay? And, 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 and I know that you all know this, but i got to say it this way. Okay? When it says word of the Lord, yes, it does mean that he spoke the world into existence. Yes. Now, you know what I just said? He spoke it, and it happened. Okay. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host, that's angels, of them. Okay, now, let me say this. You'll see the word host in the Old Testament. It has basically two meanings. Host of heaven, angels, but also the stars of heaven. We're going to get to that in just a minute. Okay. Now, go quickly to Ephesians. Ephesians 3. Ephesians 3. One verse. Verse 9, Ephesians 3, 9. It says, And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. Back to Colossians 1. Verse 9. Have you ever... It is difficult whenever you have city lights or outdoor yard lights or things of this nature. But have you ever sometime sat out at night, no lights whatsoever, everything dark, and you know, ever completely clear sky? Have you ever sat out and just looked at the vast expanses of the heavens and all those stars? Um, it's amazing to me how many people go through life and see some here that are younger, but they've never really taken time to, to really just sit and just, just look and watch. There's lots of reasons why you need to do that. We're going to just look at briefly something here this morning. Now, let me, let me give you a little info here. We're coming into, hopefully, cooler weather in the months ahead. I like it cold. Amen. I, say, I like it cold, cold. I'm talking about below zero cold. All right. We got 18 inch snowstorm on Monticello two years ago, and I'm sitting out in the front yard, and it's just coming down, boom, boom, boom. I'm just sitting out in the yard, my chair just waving at folks, going by. I like it. I realize I got some insulation, and we won't bring it up, and don't nobody say nothing to me about it, okay? Now, but in the wintertime, try this sometime. In the wintertime, find you a place. That you can go sit before daylight. Okay. Some of us sit in the deer stands, we see all this other stuff. You go duck hunting different places where you can the black off. Okay. There's a brightness to the stars in the wintertime that you don't see any other time. Yes. And you see in the wintertime, okay, you know, I'm not going to say it happens every single morning, but it's real regular. You see a lot of those shooting stars. Yeah. You know, yeah. but it's, there's a crispness. That you see in that time of year. Yeah. You get to looking. You ever tried to catch all stars? <laughs> Come on now. I, I, I remember when younger, I, hey, I'm younger. In this little section, you know, okay, okay. Well, I got 212 right there. You know, and then you lose count, man, they're just everywhere. <laughs> if you ever get a chance to go to the Creation Museum in Kentucky, they have an area there, a room uh, that you, you can go to, and if you don't, I don't remember the name of this. Anyway, but, but you just lay back in your chair and it, it shows all of this there and it's just, it's just, oh. If you could bore a hole in the sun, 
you could put 1,200,000 earths inside and still have room for 4,300,000 moons. Christ did that. The sun, 93 million miles away. Now, some of y'all remember, some of you don't, and these words, they kind of get lost and I have to read. But the diameter of the sun, okay, that's the line straight through the middle, from one end to the other. Just the diameter of the sun is 385,000 miles long. Anybody see it hurting yet? The nearest star, Alpha Centauri, is five times longer than the sun. Larger than the sun. It's 20 billion with a B miles away. That means that, okay, let me let me let me tell you a little country ball talk here. That means there's a lot of space between here and there. The North Star, y'all heard about the North Star, so many of you know how to find it. 400 billion miles away. Now, I'm not making this up, y'all listen. There's a star named Betelgeist. I'm not that's a real actual name, folks, of a star. Listen, when you got all these stars out there, you run into some crazy stuff trying to name them all. Okay? Here we go. Betelgeist, listen, it's 880 quadrillion miles away. You say, well, that's just some name a kid made up. No, you have to make up, you have to come up with names over a billion, a trillion, on 880 quadrillion miles away. It has a diameter of 200 million miles greater than the Earth's orbit. You see, all that stuff didn't just get there. There was not a point at some point time ago, way back yonder, where there was a big bang, and all of a sudden stuff just stayed there. Amen. Come on. That ain't never happened. That's a lie straight out of hell, which all lies are. Amen. All things. When it says the word of God, when it says all things, okay, you listen, hold on a minute. It's talking about that stuff too. It means all of it. All things were made by him and for him. Now, one of the things that we, we're not going to spend a lot of time on for him this morning, we'll get into that in the next, next couple of weeks. But here's the thing. Y'all need to understand something. Creation is to honor God. Amen. Amen. All creation is subject to God. That's right. Okay? Do you realize that, that one of those drops of rains that was hung up there in that cloud somehow, do you realize it don't fall to this earth without God's permission? That's right. Do you know that God knows where it ever falls, where it's going to hit? How big it is and what it's going to affect. I can remember years and years ago, back during my early teenage years, hearing people talk, and, and, and there's a reason why I can pinpoint at that time. But I can remember people talking about it, and I'm, I'm not saying that the pastor we had at the time said this, but I'm not going to put it past him. Listen, folks, God didn't just speak this stuff in the world and wind it up like a walking duck and step off and leave it alone. Says, I'll see you later. No, everything that's done, when we say that God's in control of this earth, it means he's in control. That's yeah. right. And all these people say, well, why does he allow this? And why does he allow all these things? Understand this. God's plan, I'm not going to say interrupt you because he knew about it before it ever happened, but God's plan, <coughs> God, listen, God had a perfect will, but man's the one messed that up. And brought sin into this world. And sin affects things. And sin never sets still. It grows and it grows and it grows and it destroys. That's right. All things were made by him and for him. Because he is the heir of all things. Verse 17. I can remember, it's been about, been about 15, 17 years ago. Brother Jamie and I were talking about studying the Word of God the other day, digging stuff out, this, that, and other. 
about 17 years ago, I, I, I didn't find it. It's always been right there, but just something there and some notes and everything, and, 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 and this just hit me like a ton of bricks. <clears throat> Verse 17 says, and he is before all things. Again, he didn't have a beginning. He's eternally right. existing from the Father. He's always existed. You ever sit around and thought, how did God get here? Well, he's, he's always been here. That's right. That'll make your head hurt right there. <coughs> now, hold on. And he is before all things, and by him, all your need to underline this, because this is, every Christian needs to know where this verse is. And I'm going to give you another one to go with in just a little bit, and this is going to be part of the handout that I give you, okay, for, for you to have with you at all times, for you to study, for you to have answers. For people that have questions about climate change. <laughs> and he is before all things, and by him, in him, through him, it says, all things consist. Amen. We see this word consist here, and in the English, we say, well, I know what consist is. That's not no big deal. You don't have a clue what it means. If that's, if that's, if that's as far as your brain goes, because I, I mean, listen. This word is where we get our English word, in Greek it's where we get our English word sustain. Sustain, okay? So you always come up with this Greek stuff. If you want to know what God said, you better, you better be studying. Amen. Okay? We're going to have a, we're going, we're going to address some of that another time. Here's the Greek word, S-U-N-I-S. This is the transliterated Greek. It says S-U-N-I-S, T-A-N-O, sunistano, all right? It means, means to, 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 to sustain, be conserved, hold on just a minute, or held together. Hold your place right here. Let's go to the book of Hebrews, chapter 1. You said, well, my mind's not being blown yet. Well, just hold on. It's coming. Hebrews 1. Two verses. Verses two and three. Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. Okay? This is worlds, not in the sense of what we think of, of life on other planets. That's not what this means. Okay? This means ages. To a degree, but what it actually means is space, time, and matter. You say, well, this science stuff I can't handle. Well, you're not going to handle what's coming up here in just a minute. Okay. Verse 3. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, here it is, and upholding all things by the word of his power. Now, hear what I just said. Now, listen. Either he's creator or he's not creator. Either he's a God or he's, or he's not God. Okay? That's what we as a child of God in our faith, in our, in our growing, uh, in our spiritual maturity, those are the things that we have to just hammer down and nail down and understand that when God says something, that settles it no matter what man says. Amen. No matter what some idiot on TV might say or somebody in a science class, some teacher or some politician or some heathen, it don't matter. It's what God says. It's always true. Amen. Always true. Amen. It's not contradicted ever. There's not a contradiction in God's word. There appears to be at times because of the use of English words. But as you study and as you look at it, God don't contradict yourself. God's not the author of confusion. Listen, folks. There's a hill that I will die on, and that's inerrant in Scripture. This word is inerrant. Amen. Completely. It's God's breed. All right? Now, I'm going to tell you all a little something that's going to make you sick at your stomach. Back in the late 90s, it's, it's hard for me to pinpoint. And I've got a notebook somewhere with all this stuff in it, but I can't find it. And I sure can't find it now. <laughs> <clears throat> you know, you can write all you want to what's on, in boxes and you move. But that don't mean you're going to be able to find anything when you get there. <laughs> and I thought I knew this morning right where something was. 
Came to my mind, I said, man, that box is sitting right in there on top of the shelf. And I know I got this and this and this written on that box, but I know what I'm looking for is in that box. Guess what? About 8 o'clock this morning, I went to pile the stuff out of what I was looking for. It ain't in that box. So I ain't got a clue. Right. What was I talking about? I'm serious. What was I talking about? <laughs> I'll, I'll figure it out this morning about three thirty. Sleep about three thirty. Um, we read this again. Who would be in the brightness of His glory, and express image of His person, and upholding all things by the word of His power. Okay. Late nineties, ninety eight, ninety nine ish. They had the state Baptist convention here at the Civic Center here in Monroe. So you had all the messengers come, all the pastors, all the state of Louisiana there. And uh, and one of the things that uh, was going to be voted on, okay, is trying to trying to work this out, the, or the, the, the statement, this, that, and other, that, that, that Louisiana Baptists believed, and whatever, all this stuff, whatever it's called. So one of the things that was uh, discussed and, and, and was, was, was brought up that day for us to vote on to, to either... Um, in other words, to, to accept this or reject it was the inerrancy of Scripture. Now listen to me. You just get every Tom, Dick, and Harry Baptist preacher out there together and you got problems already. Amen. You can't count on those yay hoos to believe this book. I know that may be shocking to some of you, but for an hour and 48 minutes we debated, and I didn't say a word, I'm just sitting back there with my arm across. But for an hour and 48 minutes, we debated on whether or not this was the inerrant word of God or not. I don't even know why I stayed that long. Now, y'all don't know me well enough. But I got, I done said this last week, I got just enough redhead in me. Listen to me. It's all I can do in those situations not to get up and walk right down there in the middle and grab that microphone and tell them bunch of idiots to get out of there. You don't believe this book. You can't believe in the Savior of the book. Amen. 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 That's right. And you're dangerous. That's right. You're dangerous. I, I don't hang around them kind of folks. I ain't put up with them. Now, let's talk about science here for just a minute. <clears throat> Christ is creator, amen? Everybody here know what the law of gravity is? That's an unbreakable law in this atmosphere. Does everybody understand it? That didn't just happen as a result. God created that. God is, shall we say, the author of the law of gravity. There's no math problem that God can't fix because he's the one that made the numbers in the first place. There's another law that, that, that you've heard of, and maybe it's something that you may not have, have, have studied or, or may not be necessarily just right there on the tip top of your brain. But let me read something to you here. It's easier for me to read this than, 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 than to jot all this stuff out. But let me just read this real quick. Okay, I'll give you just a second. The most basic of all scientific principles is implied in these two verses. The two verses is back in Colossians for 16, 17. 17 says, and when he was before all things, and by him all things consist. So Stamos, okay. <clears throat> that is the principle of conservation of mass and energy or all things. According to this principle, nothing is now being either created. You know, we throw that word created around a lot. Y'all understand? Y'all hear me? He created these artists, you know. Or if you want to call them that. But whatever, he created this and she created that. All this little, he, she didn't create nothing. That's right. Come on. No person has ever created anything. Right. The substance for the outcome, Christ did that a long time ago. It's already there. That's right. okay. 
Nothing is now being either created or annihilated, only conserved, served. As far as quantity is concerned, one state of matter can be changed into another, liquid to a solid. One type of energy can be converted to another, electrical energy to light energy. And under some conditions, matter and energy can be interchanged, nuclear fission. But the total quantity of mass and energy is always conserved. This law is the first law of thermo thermodynamics. Okay? It's the best proven law of science, period. Okay? Here's what we're getting at here. We need to understand something. You can drive your car around all you want to from here to yonder and everybody on the planet. You need to understand something. There's absolutely nothing that mankind can do to destroy a planet that Christ has built. It's not possible. This lie of man-made global warming is, is one of the biggest hoaxes that's ever been presented upon mankind, and it's a lie straight out of hell because it condemns a holy God from the very beginning. It denies the possibility of a creator. You say, well, you mean to tell me when all this stuff started, they knew that? You better believe they knew that. This is nothing but a bunch of God-hating people that are doing these things. That's right. yeah. This is the George Soros's of the world <laughs> and on and on, the Bill Gates of the world and the Dr. Fossey's of the world. By the way, they all belong to a certain, they all three own a certain company. Yes, sir. If you think they care about your health, if you think one minute they care about you, all they care about is, is taking the population of the planet down. That's right. All three of them don't burn in hell. Unless they get saved here on this earth. They are the enemy of mankind. Amen. They don't care about you. It's not possible within them to care about you. Sustain. Everything on this is held together by Jesus Christ. It says here, upheld by the word of his power. Don't you ever spend a sleepless night worrying because some moron on a newscast has said that a meteor is going to get hurt, hit her, and it's going to blow us all up. It ain't possible. Right. Do y'all understand? It ain't possible. Do you know what it ain't possible means? It means it ain't possible. <laughs> How'd you like that, John? John? <laughs> <laughs> Go on your weather app and look, and you can see what time the sun is going to sunrise this morning. There's a reason why that time can be set. It's because things are held in their course. Because the Earth's orbit is tilted at 23 and some odd degrees, that's why we have four seasons. That orbit is fixed, it's not going to change. Some people say, well, we don't know for sure that the, that the sun is coming up tomorrow. Oh, it's coming up tomorrow. Right. And it's coming up at the precise time that, in other words, they figure it's going to come up. Whatever time sunrise is, I don't know, 6, 18, I don't know. That's when it's coming up. It's coming up tomorrow. It's coming up the next day, and the next day, and the next day, and the next day. And that will not change if the rapture occurred right now. That will not change for at least 1,007 years. Yeah. It may all be altered a little bit at the end of the millennial reign. We'll get to that first study on Sunday night. It's better wide awake. You need to come and listen. Now, verse 18. I'm going to wrap this thing up. And he, Christ, is the head of the body, the church. Now, let me stop there just a minute. The phrase, the church, is one of the most misused and misnamed phrases there is in Christianity. Let me throw something at you. 86% of the time, 86% of the time when you see the word church, of course it's in the New Testament because there wasn't a church in the Old Testament, it's not talking about the worldwide body, it's talking about the local church. The local New Testament church. That's where Christ's authority is. It's in the church. Local. We'll get to all that another time. Verse 18 says, and he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, hold on, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have preeminence. You say, well, firstborn from the dead, he was raised from the dead, resurrection, that's what Easter is all about. Amen. 
Nobody was ever raised from the dead until Jesus Christ was. Right. Y'all hear me? And because he was, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. That's all the special you're ever going to get out of me, Brother Bill. <laughs> but isn't it the truth? Because he lives, we're here right now. Because he lives, the slab was poured at this church this afternoon. Because he lives, these walls were erected. Because he lives, these walls were painted. Because he lives, this ceiling was put here. Because he lives, that sign was put out here. Because he lives, this living, breathing organism of a local Baptist church exists to reach this terrible world we live in. Because he lives, I forgot to face the Lord. Why? Because of his resurrection. This is here, the, 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 the sense of the, of the infusion of life, eternal, verse 18. Firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have preeminence, says that word. King of kings, Lord of lords. You say, well, all this stuff, Christ sustaining this earth, everything's held together. Average person, the average person, I looked this up. That don't make me any smarter, I just somehow was able to look it up. The average person weighs 157, no comments. I'm, I'm above that. I'm, I'm almost. I'm too average person. Do you know me? Adams is in the average person. Seven billion billion billion. If you write that out, that's a seven with twenty-seven zeros. Now, some of you are not going to be able to sleep tonight because you're going to be worried. <laughs> you realize if one of those atoms, <coughs> one, and if you're over 157, it's more zeros than that. If one of those atoms was to fall apart, you history. And everything around you is history. You realize that in the six plus thousand years that the earth's been here, there's never been a single person in the atoms that fell apart? Y'all hear what I just said? Amen. It ain't never happened yet? Christ is holding up his creation. It's not going to descend into chaos. Yes, there's coming a time where God's going to do and have some changes made on this earth. There's coming a time, okay, shall we say, where the mountains will be flattened. Listen to me. But they're only being flattened because God flattens them. He's sustaining this earth. You can have the biggest carbon footprint of anybody in the world, you're not affecting this earth one bit. Now, yes, it, but listen, they're, they're, don't throw them trash. Listen, you got to use some common sense here. We are stewards of this earth that we live in, but not in the sense where it becomes perverted. Amen. A lot of people think we had a hot summer this summer. And as you hear on the newscasts, all these folks freaking out. Climate change, climate change, climate change. It's hotter than it's ever been. Oh, no, it ain't. That's right. That's right. Back in the early 80s, it was a whole lot hotter than what we just went through. Yeah, right. Go over to Delta and start talking to some of them old farmers up there about, 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 about way back in the 80s, early 80s, whenever they was irrigating and stuff. And I talked about the big cracks in the gumbo. Yeah. 1980, I was pitching regular every summer. We drove over to, I don't even know the name of the town there, right before you go to the Mississippi River, go over to Mississippi, in the National. All-Star Tournament, State All-Star Tournament, Dixie, Dixie Major. I was pitching, 3 o'clock, it was 106 degrees. We pulled up in the parking lot, there was an ambulance sitting out there. Why? Because they was putting the umpire in it because he doesn't have heat exhaustion, fell out. I went nine innings. Yeah, we won. I lost 14 pounds. <laughs> Listen to me. 100 degrees. We had a few out of the ministry year. I'd rather not have any of them. But it's nothing new. That's right. 
It's nothing new. We're not changing this earth pattern all of a sudden, nothing. Why? Because we can't. Christ is the sustainer, folks. And I've said all this and I've went into all of this for a reason. You need to know those things, but there's something else you need to know. That Jesus Christ, the creator of this world, that created this earth and everything in all things. Again, the Bible talks about him knowing when a sparrow falls. He came to this earth, lived a perfect life, died on the cross and was resurrected for you. For me, that we might have a way in the heaven. We can't be good enough to get there. We can't clean ourselves up and all of a sudden our good, good things outweigh our bad. It don't work that way. Amen. It's by faith in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Conviction of sin and seeing that what? I'm hopelessly lost. I'm guilty. I'm a sinner. I need a savior. The God that hung those stars way up yonder and way out yonder. Those are a witness to his greatness, to his awesomeness, but they pale in comparison to the person that he is and his love that he has for you and I. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, for God. Lord, we need you. God, for every one person here, Lord, that's saved, God, we need you desperately. Day to day, we need your wisdom. We need your guidance. We need you, Father, to, to, to show us and strengthen us, Lord, in the things, Father, as we serve you. Prepare us, God. God, I pray, Lord, that our lives be honored Pray, God, that you're living through us, Lord, as we, God, are a servant to others. Father, I pray right now, if there ain't be anyone here that's lost, God, that's never come to an to, to exact point in their life where they realize that they were lost. God, I pray that your Holy Spirit <coughs> speak to their heart even now. Show them, God, that they're guilty before you. And there is no hope. And there is a penalty for their sin. And there is an eternity after death. But God, you made a way through your son Jesus Christ that we could spend eternity <coughs> with you in heaven forever and ever and ever and ever. If we will only see our sins and by faith repent of our sins. Believing by faith that your son, that Jesus Christ, died on the cross for us personally, for our sin. He paid the price for our sin. But we must recognize our sin, repent, ask you, God, to forgive us, and call upon you to be our Lord and Savior. God, you know every heart here this morning. You know every need. I'm certain that there are spiritual needs here that, that I have in no way touched on. God, you can meet those needs. Pray, God, that we just trust you. In Jesus' precious name, I pray. Amen.